The reason why you'd create a template is because the better prepared you are, it makes it easy for you to get ideas down and get right to working. My name is Sonny Carson, and today we'll be going over creating templates. We'll be using Pro Tools, but the concepts that we go over today can be used in any genre of music and can be applied to any DAW. So let's get started. Step one, what we'll do here is create an instrumental track, a stereo audio track. This track is created just to hold the instrumental or the beat that we'll be performing to. Some of the optional plugins I like to put on a track like this is a tune analysis plugin. In this case, I'll use mixed and key. What this plugin does, it helps me tell what the key of the song is in. If I need to set auto-tune or any kind of uh, pitch correction software, this will help me find the pitch of the song in a very easy manner. From time to time, I might use a multiband compressor. Let's pull up C6. Step two, the record track. This track is used specifically to record vocal takes. I usually keep a track like this with little to no plugins to reduce any possibilities of latency problems while I'm recording. This track makes it extremely simple to do overdub takes and to maneuver throughout the session. I also like to color code a lot of my tracks, which I'll do in the process of creating some of these. I'll make this one a bright red, and I'll make that instrumental track purple. Some of the optional plugins I use on this track is Auto-Tune EFX. I may use a channel strip. It depends on what the artist requires. I'll put the Auto-Tune plugin on there now, and I'll also bypass it because we don't know what the pitch of the song will be or if the artist requires auto-tune or not, but it's good to have it there. Step three, lead vocal tracks. Because many people do overdubs, I usually keep three to four lead vocal tracks. In this particular scenario, let's use three. Since all these tracks will have similar processing, I'll decide to route them to an aux track. We'll call these the lead vocal aux. I also decide to color these green. I also have to remember to solo safe this. It will not allow me to hear these if I solo this and the auxiliary track is not solo safe. Some of the optional plugins I usually put on this track is a channel strip. Let's use the Avid channel strip. That way I can process all these vocals similarly when it's time to mix. Step four. We'll basically repeat the process again for background vocal tracks. I usually do background vocals in pairs of twos. In this case, let's do four. So we'll call that back vox aux. I will solo save the back vox aux for the same reason that I did the lead vocal aux. One of the optional plugins that I use on these tracks is also a channel strip. That way, I can EQ and compress the group together. Step five, I have a track for my instrumental, a track to record, three tracks to hold my lead vocals, the lead vocal auxiliary track that processes those lead vocals. We have background vocal tracks, and we have a background vocal auxiliary to process those tracks. So this should cover us for most of our recording. Many artists like to record and hear their effects in real time. So let's create some effects tracks. So I'll create four effects tracks, two reverbs, a delay, an additional effect track for whatever else I'll need for the session. Let's create their inputs. We'll have the first reverb. I like to start at bus one and two. We'll create the second reverb on bus three and four. We'll create the third effect on bus five and six, and the fourth auxiliary effect on bus seven and eight. In order to avoid confusion, let's rename these buses. I usually like the stock reverb that comes in the Pro Tools, so let's pull up D-verb as our first reverb. And then for my second reverb, Let's use Little Plate. For our delay effect, we'll use H Delay by Waves. And for our auxiliary effect, we'll use Little Micro Shift. I use Micro Shift to make vocals wider at times. But that's a little trick that we'll get into in another video. Step six, we'll go back through all the tracks and let's route the sends to the effects. So we'll create a send to Reverb 1, create another send to Reverb 2. Let's create a send to Delay. And if we need to, we'll create a send to the auxiliary effect. And that's specifically for our record track. And we'll do the same for our lead vocal track, as well as our back vocal aux. 
Step seven, let's create the master track. The master track is important for us to see our final levels. We can use it for temporary bus compression and things like limiting to make sure we don't clip. My personal template varies because I have additional routing features. I have sends going to mix buses. I have a print bus. I also have a Q mix for when I want to create a different mix for the artist. What I'll do is I'll leave a basic template for people to be able to download if you want to follow along or have something to start with just for you to create ideas. If you're interested in me helping you make a custom template, don't be afraid to hit me up on Instagram. S the number five everything. In summary, we've created the template. Let's see what this looks like in action.